Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to our latest webcast that we're bringing you from Aspire and Travel Weekly. Uh, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Chris Austin, who is the Chief Sales Officer at Explorer Journeys. So welcome, Chris. How are you? I'm very well, Lucy. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you all and to say hello to, obviously, all the wonderful advisors in the UK and Ireland. Great to see you all through the camera, through the camera. Through the camera. Well, hopefully as things are opening up, we might see you in person one day soon. But we're so delighted you could join us today, Chris. Uh, for those who don't know, Explorer Journeys, of course, is the new luxury uh, brand that's being set up, part of MSC Cruises, but it's very much a, a brand in its own right. Uh, but of course, Chris, people won't know you from that. They'll know you from your most recent past at Seabourn. Prior to that, you were in the hotel, luxury hotel space. But um, tell us why you've joined Explorer. I guess, you know, it's very exciting. But what, what was the appeal for you to, to move there? Well, it is really exciting. It's not only exciting just for myself, but it's exciting for everybody. And, you know, new brand development at this moment in time is all about, you know, optimism and hope and in, an incredibly bright future being ahead for all of us. In fact, you know, I'm absolutely convinced, Lucy, our brightest years are ahead of us for all, for everybody, for everybody that's listening uh, today, our brightest years are ahead. And yes, I actually had a great job I thought I had my dream job actually I can remember uh, being on a holiday a long time ago with my husband and uh, we saw this beautiful ship on the horizon and um, I said why oh, wouldn't it be great to go on that and he said well you know if you worked for them that could be the easiest way to to go on it so I actually did I ended up working for them and that was Seabourn and you know great brand as are all the classic traditional luxury brands but my phone rang uh, middle of last year so the middle of last year was the middle of the global pandemic oh. and my tea leaves did not tell me that I was going to be offered an opportunity to join a brand, a new brand and a team creating a new brand. And I think that's what was really appealing and really exciting, you know, to bring a brand new brand to market. It's sort of, to me at least, you know, it's, it's the peak of your career when you can bring everything that you've learned and shape of the future of a brand. And it's, you know, we talk a lot, Lucy, about having the art of listening and knowledge exchange. And that's what I've done through my entire career and will continue to do. And when you listen, but then you bring that information forward and say, how can you utilize it? You have an incredible opportunity to connect with your audiences, both guests and of course the travel advisors. And one of the things I remember asking uh, our CEO, Michael Ungura, and Mr. Vargo, the executive chairman of the MSC uh, Passenger Cruises you know, division, um, to sort of say, how blank is the piece of paper? And they said to me, it's very blank. <laughs> you know, so you can you can take that as two in two ways. You can say, oh, my goodness, I've got a you know, that's a lot of work to fill the piece of paper in. Or it's an incredible opportunity because the opportunity to sort of rewrite the rule book and actually having, again, applied all those listenings, all those learnings to really create industry leading, industry first policies that will protect the health and longevity of the travel advisor community for years to come. And that's what I want to say, Lucy, you know, Explorer Journeys is a brand new brand, but we're here for the long term. And uh, I know today we'll share a little bit about the brand and that we are the luxury brand. We like to say the luxury brand of the MSC Group and MSC Cruises is our sister brand. We're very, very proud of obviously the sister brand, but, um, you know, MSC is a powerhouse. They're a, they're a huge company, a huge you know, a group of brands. And in fact, they're incredibly financially stable. Um, not having actually borrowed specifically because of the pandemic. And that's because of the cargo division and, you know, other businesses under their umbrella. Uh, so very financially stable and bringing a dream to, uh, to reality. Absolutely. Well, you talk about the financially stable. They've invested $2 billion in uh, four vessels for this brand so just to be clear the first one coming explorer one in 2023 that's not far away so we need to really understand about it and get everyone fired up and behind it and then obviously three more coming after that 24 25 26 so you have got your work cut out but you talked there a little bit about industry first chris and i know um 
in the stories we've written before about what you're planning, we've talked about reinventing the classic cruise experience for the next generation of luxury travellers. And we've said, or we've quoted your CEO as saying, it's as distinct as it is trailblazing. So I know you're not going to give away everything, but can you just give us a little idea of how Explorer Journeys is going to take this luxury cruise experience to the next level? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think what we're building all comes through guest centricity and having asked a multitude, thousands of consumers, what we hope are future guests, clients of our travel advisors, and actually also asking our travel advisors, what would you want in a new brand? And, you know, Lucy, let's be honest, if they'd have actually said, you know, create another sort of classic luxury cruise brand, I guess that's what we would be doing. And this is no, um, you know, uh, uh, negative comment on existing brands. We actually believe that every single, you know, cruise brand out there needs to be successful and obviously does an excellent job in their field. But the, through the guest centricity, we were told there is an opportunity. And um, it starts actually with ourselves being called Explorer Journeys. And a journey is far more than just a cruise. You know, I mean, obviously many guests, many clients of travel advisors, they book pre, they book post stays in beautiful five-star hotels. They can book overland journeys, longer immersive experiences before they're boarding a ship, of course. It is the onboard experience as well. But isn't it as, as well a journey of you you know, how you connect with yourself and what you're actually looking for. Maybe it's a quieter time with a little bit of solitude. You know, maybe it's a vibrant experience. Maybe it's getting to know who you're traveling with. Maybe your journey is all about meeting new people and actually building lifetime stories, lifetime memories, how you discover those new destinations that we're taking you to, whether they're marquee ports, whether they're little, you know, hidden gems where we're actually going to, to journey. So that's one of the core sort of beliefs behind why we're Explorer Journeys, really that whole discovery of you, the people you're with and the destinations we travel with. You know, through that guest centricity, Lucy, our guest said, they actually wanted space, they wanted choice, and they wanted privacy. And that really led to the design of the ships, actually. So the ships, you're absolutely correct, four ships from 23, 24, 25, 26, maybe a couple more as well. There's a few options out there as well. But we built a ship and designed a ship that is 63,900 tons. And why? Because unless we had a ship of that scale, carrying 900 guests, we wouldn't deliver on the space, choice, and privacy. So some of the ways we're doing that is we have the largest lead-in suite in our category. So the lead-in suite, 35 square meters, or 370 square feet for those like me who are still stuck a little <laughs> bit in the uh, imperial days uh, of measurements, but the largest, the largest lead-in suite in our category, actually. All of our suites are full ocean front, and full terraces. And again, why do we say terraces? Because the balconies are larger than the standard balcony in our category. So let's actually have some fun with nomenclature. Let's not just change names for the sake of it, but if there's purpose behind it, then let's basically focus on the nomenclature. So all suite, all ocean front, all terrace. As we move up the ship, we actually have 23 suites that are so beautiful, we're calling them residences. And actually that, again, is nomenclature that plays very much into, we want our ship to be your home at sea. And at sea is critical as well, because we really want our guests to connect with the ocean. And we call that having the ocean state of mind when you're on board and you're enjoying all this beautiful space that we've created, really getting in touch with the ocean, with water. We actually have four pools, one's an in inside pool as well, Lucy. But really uh, how you would describe and how I would describe that ocean state of mind would again be very unique, very individual, because we connect with the ocean in different ways. But of course, the ocean transports us to these fabulous places, but it also is going to create your perfect day when we're actually having a sea day. Choice comes exactly in what guests ask for, nine culinary experiences, those four swimming pools we spoke about, the top 23 residences 
having privacy with large terraces, also including private whirlpools on every single terrace. So a lot of choice uh, built into obviously the ship design. And I was gonna say, I think this is really interesting because lots of people assume that luxury has to mean boutique, very small to get that privacy and that level of service or, or that space ratio. But you're basically having a slightly larger vessel to mm -hmm. give you what you're describing so much more of what your guests are asking for, which people it's, might not have expected, I guess. That's very true. And I think, you know, you're absolutely right. Um, the size of our ship is going to deliver on what the guest, you know, the centricity around guest feedback basically told us. You know, the space is, is, is key. The outdoor deck space allows you to connect, as I say, with the ocean, et cetera, et cetera. So really thoughtful. A ship designed with purpose, a ship designed by the world's finest super yacht maritime architects and in Canturi, who are, of course, our shipbuilders uh, in Italy. And actually, when you look at the silhouette of the ship, you will see immediately the inspiration of a super yacht, the gorgeous aft and how we have an upper yeah. aft deck, a lower aft deck. We actually have a marina platform where we could private tender for VIP guests in those top residences as well. So really an elegant ship, beautifully painted in, in those dark, you know, navy, pantone blue colors, flash of gold, a beautiful red line at the water line there. I mean, a very elegant and a gorgeous yeah. bow. She's a classic, and, and are, beautiful Are we ship. expecting all four ships to look exactly the same Chris or presumably there'll be some differences won't there because you'll have learnings as you go exactly and they, might, they yeah. might be tweaked but I guess they're all they're, they're from a series aren't they the four yes in terms yes. Of size and the, the general layout Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And, you, you know, you're very experienced in this industry that generally after the first ship, you'll make a few changes. But they're, they're, they're often, you know, cosmetic. Uh, but the general design of the ship will obviously stay, uh, stay exactly the same. And, and we're very proud. Uh, she's under construction. And in fact, on October the 6th, uh, a couple of weeks back, uh, we cut the steel for Explorer 2 as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all of our ships we called Explorer. We'll use Roman numerals for one, two, three, four. There's a level of elegance, we think, in that. But it also, for a brand new brand, Lucy, is a brand reinforcer, yes. I mean, the ship is called Explorer and the yeah. brand is called Explorer Journeys. And uh, so Tell us a little bit about the um, itineraries, uh, uh, you know, where she's going to be sailing. And also touch a little bit, because you talked about her staying longer, leaving later, traveling deeper. That's one of the yes. more sort of taglines, I think. So, you know, and un you talked there about getting to know destinations more immersive. So where's she gonna be going uh, initially, the first, the first Explorer One, give us an idea. Yeah, well, we're taking Explorer One halfway around the world actually in the first year. So we're really showcasing the ship and that means we're showcasing the brand, of course, to guests. We'll actually launch in late May in the Mediterranean in 2023. And we'll have a series of journeys, obviously the maiden, and then a series of journeys throughout the Mediterranean, Eastern Mediterranean, Western Mediterranean. We'll then actually move up through to Northern Europe and actually enjoy a fairly shortest season up in Northern Europe, then around circumnavigating the UK. Now here I can insert a little bit about the slower and deeper, more immersive. And this again comes from that guest centricity. They told us they really want to obviously discover and immerse themselves in their destinations. So longer stays, unconventional arrival and departure times, overnights. They also said they loved sea days. So it's building itineraries that have that combination. It's building itineraries that don't require another holiday after the holiday. <laughs> so we're not filling the itineraries necessarily with you know, chasing ports, as I like to say. Yeah. We're building very thoughtfully with purpose. So when we go around the UK, we're overnighting actually in Edinburgh to allow guests to go to the military tattoo. Um, when we're in Rio, for example, we'll overnight so that guests can enjoy the Carnival in Rio de Janeiro. So after we've been done that nice circumnavigation of the UK, we go across Iceland and Greenland to the Maritimes in North America. Think of fall foliage in 2023 in okay. Canada, et cetera, down the eastern seaboard into the Caribbean. I think we should all be celebrating our Christmas New Year festive on Explorer One Lucy in the deep Caribbean at the end of 23, 24. Sounds I think great. that sounds, sounds fantastic. And then early January, we'll actually start a circumnavigation of South America 
hence my commentary about Owen Nighting in Rio, but fabulous itineraries. And then, and, of course, what were the duration? So Sorry, Chris, I don't mean to interrupt, but for agents watching this and thinking about, you know, the kind of customers it'd be right for, some of these, what you're talking about suggests it could be quite a, a, a longer journey. So, at le you know, is, is seven the minimum you would, you know, how long would you want people to stay on? What are these yeah. itineraries going to be? Are it's they more like two weeks or? It's a great question. I'm happy you happy you asked that, actually, Lucy. Really, every itinerary is a shorter itinerary, seven, eights, or nines, unless yeah. the actual journey requires, you know, from point A to point B yeah. requires longer. But we're not home porting. We're not, in general, repeating ports. Okay. So you can combine your journeys together. So it's right. very easy to say, I want a 14 night journey and you combine two seven nights and that's a combination. You, you book it as one, you stay in the same suite, etc. You can actually be on a grand journey of anything from 44 to 55 nights. We have grand journeys in the Mediterranean, in Northern yeah. Europe, in South America, but generally they're shorter. And we've done that again, because in the, uh, the focus groups, we, we had many guests told us, you know, I would love to actually, you know, I've never cruised. So, I, you know, give me the opportunity to be on a ship sort of seven days, uh, et cetera. But again, make sure I, I, I can discover the destinations, make sure I have a sea day. And I think everybody agrees when you're at sea on a ship, uh, it's a it's a wonderful experience, you know, those days. They're very relaxing. You can, of course, we're very focused on wellness um, and, and obviously well-being, et cetera, uh, not only on the ship when we're in the ports. So, you know, to that question you asked, how are we delivering the, the, the perfect day? Uh, those unconventional arrival and departure times, staying overnight, a wonderful portfolio of destination experiences, whether they're from a more simple sort of shorter experience to really elevated, um, really unique, memorable experiences. And I'm gonna actually give a little teaser, which I'll speak to in a minute, but travel advisors will be able to earn commission on every single destination experience they book through us as well. Wow. So okay. uh, wonderful well, look, you, opportunity. Yeah, you've led me on Brilliantly, it's as if we planned this, Chris, and we and we I can assure you we haven't. But I wanted to talk about how you're engaging agents because it, this is quite interesting. And you know, I know this is another reason why you're excited about joining because of the way you can work with your trade partners. Now you've talked about generous commissions, no non-commissionable fees, uh, commission paid on optional extras. Maybe this is what you're talking about in terms of some of the the, the destinations and the tours. But you've also got this appointment service it sounds to me like you're trying to do as much as you can to get the trade behind you so perhaps tell us a little bit about that and how how important a, you know advisors are going to be to you particularly coming out of covid when consumers seem to need more hand holding and more reassurance right right well i will start by saying we are a hundred plus percent committed to our travel advisor partners. So much so, I have a little sheet of paper here just disappearing in the Zoom lens that says our commitment to our valued travel advisors. It's two pages, it's in print. And uh, I think that really exemplifies how committed we actually are. You know, it, 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 it's sort of basically, it's, it's our vision statement to obviously our travel advisors. And you know the, the health and longevity of travel advisors is absolutely critical for all suppliers, but especially for ourselves. But I think you have to be creative. You have to think, how can you support the travel advisor? Um, and also, you know, how, how can you basically cut through? Yes, so handsome commissions. Um, travel advisors can be earning up to 18% commission with us. Uh, that commission though, with no NCFs, is probably worth, um, well, it is worth more. It's probably worth yeah. more than 20%. Huh? Yeah. But it's also about the simplicity. We want to be joyful to do business with. Some may say easy to do business with, but, you know, let's be joyful to do business with. So why do we want to sort of advertise a commission and a fair and then, you know, take take portions out which are non-commissional? Yeah. We're not going to do that. Um, we're also, and we have launched, the very, very first industry, what we're calling Rolling Commission Payment Program. So we're the first, first brand 
ocean experience brand, trying very hard not to say cruise, yes, <laughs> the ocean experience brand. This is part of our DNA. This is part of how we will operate. We will pay commission on the receipt of the funds for deposits and then also on the receipt of those funds for final payment. It is not a promotion. It is not something that's starting now and finishing in six weeks time. This is how we will operate. So we talked about Explorer One not sailing until the end of May, 2023, but travel advisors can start earning commission with us in 2021. And actually, if you take advantage of our Explorer early booking benefit, that's a pay in full, you could earn 100% of the commission when the guest 100 pays in full in 2021, Lucy. So this is a huge- well, Which is commitment. so important, Chris, because people need, agents have been, well, you know this, but everyone's been so hard hit and obviously, normally they don't get the do they? They don't get the money, or the commission payment till somebody actually departs. And so, exactly, to exactly. get it sooner is going to be really important. Now, I mentioned about earning commission also on those destination experiences, but it's not just on destination experiences. You know, if you're doing the work and you're booking, uh, first of all, you're, you're talking to your clients, you're selling, you know, what what they want to do, understand what they want to do, and obviously booking those for them. You can earn commission. If you're booking transfers, pre or post hotels, and of course we'll have the finest portfolio of luxury hotels, you can earn commission on overlands, which are those longer immersive pre or yeah. post, and then the destination experiences. Again, if we're preferred partners, it's a 10% commission. This is relatively unheard of, and the commission will be paid after guest disembarkation. So think about our rolling commission payment program and that we're paying also on the add-ons. You'll get commission three times, payment to deposit, payment of final, and after guest disembarkation. So I think that's a pretty healthy uh, compensation. We're also protecting the advisor if guests book on board, 100% of the time. So when we're sailing, if your clients obviously book a future journey on board, then the travel advisor is going to be protected 100%. If, and this is going to be a sizable amount of money, I'm assuming, because we haven't really talked about your average selling price, because I guess you've got a range up to your residences. But even yeah. so, even in the lowest cap, you know, category, leading uh, categories, it's still going to be a serious you know, amount of commission they can earn on that, on that fare. Well, it, it is, it is. And I think you know, every travel advisor actually has a luxury client and therefore they all have the opportunity of supporting you know explorer journeys and the luxury uh, segment in in general and why do i say they all have a luxury client because people want to celebrate lifetime events so you may have true affluence who can you know journey with us six times a year but you also may have a client where you ask the question when are you celebrating a big birthday or a big wedding anniversary? And they may say three or four years time. And you say, I have the perfect idea. We're going to celebrate with travel. And I've got the perfect brand for you, Explorer Journeys. And you plan, you become a lifetime planner. And that's how you can turn every client into a luxury client. Yeah. And I know you kind of said tongue in cheek there that you're trying not to say cruise. And, and I get that. It's an ocean experience. But actually, do you think that might mean that you will appeal to not just cruise specialist agents and cruisers but you could actually broaden your appeal out to other other types of guests and other, agents and other agents absolutely lucy that is certainly an opportunity for the entire industry you know 30 million plus people cruised in 2019 but in comparison to how many took you know, land-based holidays, you know, we're not even tapping into the, the, the true opportunity, but you have to connect with people. And this is where we say, why do we say ocean front and not ocean view? Why do we say terraces? Why do we say journeys? Why do we say residences? All these wonderful words. We don't even say true, Lucy. We have the highest host to guest ratio in the industry because of the, how many hosts we're putting on board. True, yeah, crew, crew work in the cargo division. We're going to be your perfect host and we have hosts and we're going to have lots of them passionate about the business that they're in and obviously, you know, exceeding expectations for, for our guests on board. If we connect with those luxury land lovers, as I love to call them, I think we can attract more to our segment. I mean, there's no better holiday than actually taking 
I'll say it, a cruise, an oh, ocean experience. It? I said it. it. <laughs> Taking an ocean experience. I mean, it really delivers yeah. an amazing, amazing experience for, for guests and great value as well. We're going to be an all-inclusive experience, yes? No upcharges for any restaurants, no upcharges for um uh internet or anything you know all gratuities included obviously food wine poured out the day throughout the day you'll be welcomed with a beautiful chilled bottle of champagne in your suite you can stock your mini bar with your preferred uh alcoholic beverage or wine i mean a fully inclusive experience and um great value that the industry yeah. delivers yeah yeah absolutely well look, let's just um keep on the theme of travel advisors at the minute um i know you Got, you've got this preferred status with Virtuoso, which is really interesting because you're the first sort of brand, cruise brand that you haven't even got a ship sailing yet. So that's interesting. But um, I'm interested to know what you're doing in the UK market specifically. Um, obviously, I'm sure you're talking to lots of the big cruise agents, etc. But will you, Chris, I mean, you're gonna, you, you've got a, quite a lot to do here. So are you going to have a UK dedicated team at all here? And are you, and how are you going to sort of approach our market yes absolutely absolutely we are as i said we're committed to travel advisors and we're committed to the uk and island market as well actually and you know you're not going to get it out of me lucy but i uh, i'm so excited about the individual who is joining our brand this december to represent explorer journeys in the uk i'm i'm not even going to say she or he or he oh. or she but okay. um, we're very, very excited. And that shows our commitment to the market. And then obviously right. we will be adding to the team uh, in the UK. Yes, we're speaking to um, obviously partners in the UK, but every travel advisor today has the opportunity. You referenced our, again, industry first by appointment service. And it's open now. Uh, you can request an appointment as an advisor. Uh, very simple to, to do so. It's a four-click process. Why did we develop this? Because we wanted to give advisors full control as to the time and day when they speak to us. So we have completely removed on hold times and you get a professional ambassador at our Explorer Experience Center who can talk to you about any of our journeys for Explorer One, our inaugural collection, Actually, we created eight inaugurals, not just one, because we're going to those eight regions of the world that I spoke of earlier. And uh, just a tremendous opportunity. So I think for advice. If, if I'm an agent now, I can call, I can have a buy appointment, speak to one of your ambassadors, and then I can get my clients on a wait list or I can. Exactly. Okay. Yes. You can wait list a specific suite by suite number on a specific oh, journey. Great. And then we will set another appointment with you mid-November to do a conversion to depositive booking. Then 10 days following, you will receive your commission on the deposit funds that we have received. You'll start earning with us. The buy appointment service will continue forever. Obviously wait lists currently because we're not open publicly for sale, yeah. but it will become a booking service. And then of course there'll be an inbound number for our Explorer Experience Center and um, travel advisors have a wonderful opportunity. I said right at the beginning of our call, our future is gonna be very, very bright. And uh, clearly- oh, it's so Yeah, it's so lovely to hear you're positive. I mean, you're never not positive, you're brilliant. So, uh, but it is so great after everything we've been through to have to be talking about something you know, so exciting and so positive. Um, just is. before we move on, I know we're not, you're not going to give us a name. That's fine. But it's just wonderful to know that you're going to have a dedicated, uh, I guess, head of sales or somebody that's going to be here yeah. and, and building that team. And can we expect that person to be driving sort of training and, you know, really sort of helping agents with, you know, stuff to help them sell and all the kind of materials they'll need? Is it going to be we're going to be seeing a lot of you, I guess. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. We're going to be highly visible. Uh, we're going to, obviously, advisors are going to have great access to us. You know, I mean, I may sit in Miami for my home, but, you know, I'm a phone call or an email away. I'm a very hands-on commercial, you know, sales leader. I love, love just helping our travel advisors grow their business, basically. And we've got to be mutually successful, Lucy. It doesn't work if that isn't, isn't the case. We've got to be mutually successful. We're going to help our travel advisors grow their business, find new 
clients, new guests, so that, again, we grow and grow together. And um, yeah, we're very excited about the UK. I think, you know, the UK has, is a highly penetrated, you know, cruise market. And um, again, we can continue to grow that, though, for advisors and, uh, you know, as I say, mutually successful together. And I know you're going to do your round UK sailing with Explorer One, but might, might there be time to squeeze in a, a little um, overnight where you might get some of your trade partners yes. to see her? Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. So we are planning to showcase the ship. I think I referenced that when I talked about uh, taking her halfway around the world for the first year. We want to invite as many travel advisors on board to showcase Explorer 1. And of course, then the following year, Explorer 2, et cetera, as well. Really, we understand the value of seeing the product is absolutely critical and we'll really work hard to do as much as that as possible. You asked about resources for training and marketing. We are building a best in class travel advisor center Center. And okay. within that, we'll have a booking suite important for those advisors who like to book through automated tools, but we'll also have a marketing suite, we'll have a knowledge suite, we'll have a performance suite. So we're creating the tools, again, as I say, best in class, um, to really help the advisors learn about our, um, obviously, our beautiful ship and our brand, plus Lucy. We're going to take full advantage of all the things you offer to us. Oh, yes. I know. Well, we're so, so grateful that you've given your first uh, interview to us at Aspire and, and Travel Weekly. But I know our members of Aspire and our, our readers of Travel Weekly would be really, really interested in, in this. So we're, we're super grateful. Also, Chris, we normally see you at CLEAR events. Are you going to be joining CLEAR and coming along and being interviewed by me in person at some stage? Yeah, I'd, lo I'd love that, actually. I was in touch with Andy recently. Hi, Andy. And uh, we've just got to uh, finish off our, our, our application, our membership for, for CLEAR, of course, as a brand new brand. Um, but yes, and I'm actually going to be in the UK definitely on December the 13th. It's going to be an important day. Uh, because we're going to be celebrating all together and I'm going to be uh, enjoying attending the, uh, the wonderful event in London that, uh, that you're all hosting. We're running, yeah, so we've got the Aspire Awards, so we will look forward to seeing you there. Well, look, Chris, uh, we could keep talking this. I mean, you're so enthusiastic about it. I can't wait to see her because she's going to be, I think, something else, uh, it, definitely from what you've described today. But I think actually the, the as important is what you've talked about for your trade partners. Um, which is which just sounds like it's going to be really something very special as well. So um, it really, it really is, Lucy. I have I have a tip that I'd love actually just to give to everybody as well. Yeah. You know, the power of video is the the most critical, important media you can actually leverage in today's world. On the explorerjourneys.com website, in fact, the only thing currently on our website really is our brand reveal video of three minutes. I would suggest. Travel advisors tell their clients to pour a glass of wine, a cup of tea, whatever is preferred, make a martini, sit back and watch the three minute video and then have those clients call you to obviously discuss and, and, and learn more. There's not one person who has watched the video that hasn't been inspired. So leverage the power of video, introduce Explorer Journeys to your clients. And as I said, together, our future Lucy is going to be incredibly bright. Oh, I hope so. Well, I can't wait to see you in person, Chris. Good luck with everything. Me too. Um, December the 13th, can't come quick enough. We'll see you then. And you can reveal the little secret you're hiding, which we're yes. very excited about as well. So uh, best of luck. And thank you so thank much you. for joining us. Chris Austin from Explorer Journey. Thank you.